I've done that, I'm going to come down the arm and I have to palpate the entire circumference of the arm. So I'm going to come down the humerus until I get to the humeral condyles, both medial and lateral. I want to palpate the olecranon process in the back of the elbow. And if I want to get really fancy and impress my instructors, I'll palpate the proximal radial head, which is right here. Once I've palpated there, I'll come down the remainder of the arm to the wrist. I'll palpate the radial and ulnar styloids. I'll palpate over the carpal bones and then each metacarpal separately. So fifth, out to the MCP joint. And then the way I do this, I come out, then I stay at the MCP joint, and I come back to the wrist. Then I move over, come back out to the MCP joint, and then back to the wrist, switching hands, and then come out and palpate each metacarpal. Once I get to this point, palpating the, the digits is from the sides, not from the top. This is the reason why I suggest that you keep these separate. The biggest mistake I see people making is they come down here like this and they continue right out onto the finger, palpating top and bottom, never palpating the sides, incorrect technique. Okay? Do the metacarpals, then just come out along the sides of the thumb, palpating the joints all the way to the tip, come out here, palpate the joint, palpate the joint, proximal and distal intraphalangeal joints, come all the way out through here, same thing back through here, and finally this finger. And then we will come around and do exactly the same thing on this side. I mean, around, feeling the condyles, feeling the lepernon process, feeling the radial head, coming down the forearm to the wrist, and feeling the radial and ulnar styloids, feeling the carpal bones, and then coming out each metacarpal. And you can do this fairly quickly. And then coming out each of the digits, making sure that I check the distal and proximal interphalangeal joints. Does it matter if you go from proximal to distal or distal to proximal? No, as long as you do full digital examination. Once we're done with that, we're ready to do range of motion. I'm going to ask you to turn towards me. Maybe you get a little better picture for the cameras. And what I'd like you to do is take your arms and bring them up over your head with the palms of your hands together. Good. Bring them down. Cross them in front of you as far as you can, keeping your elbows straight. Good. Bring them down and back to your side. I'd like you to bring your hands up with your palms forward and bring them all the way behind you and reach as far as you can. So I did abduction, add reduction, flexion, and extension. And I should have verbalized that while we were doing it. The next thing I want you to do, I want you to bring your arms up like this, and I want you to bring your hands in behind your head. That's external rotation. And I want you to bring your hands behind your back with your palms facing out. That's internal rotation. And lastly, I want you to bring your arms down to your side and make small circles. That's circumduction. With your hands in this position, palms forward, I'd like you to bend your arms up far as you can and straighten them back out again. Bring your elbows in with your palms down. I'd like you to turn your hands palm up, that's supination, and turn your hands palm down, that's pronation. What I'd like you to do now is flex your wrists down as far as you can and back up and up as far as you can and down. And turn your hands in towards each other, that's radial deviation and turn your hands out, that's ulnar deviation. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second because that's pretty much everything from the shoulder to the wrist. We'll get to the hand here in a minute. Key points of emphasis, when you do flexion of the elbows, they will bring their arms up as far as they can, bring their arms back down. Now, I want you to bend your elbows for me and tuck your elbows in and put your palms down. This is what I suggest. You can start it in the palm up position, it doesn't matter. But by starting with the palms down, what I'm going to ask you to do is turn your hands palm up. Okay? And now I want you to turn your hands palm down. By doing this, I'm, put, I'm setting her into the position that I want her to be in for the next part of my examination. If I start with the palms up and then go, okay, palms down, now palms back up. Now, I, I can do flexion of the wrists in this direction, but it's real uncomfortable to do that and you really don't get a sense of what you want. So for me, 
starting with the palms down and then turning them up and back down accomplishes what I need to do for supination and pronation and then this gets me ready for flexion of the wrist. So at this point if she when she did her uh, pronation if she swung her elbows out when she turned her wrist down then what you would have to do is okay, turn your hands palm now I want you to turn your hands palm down for me stabilize her elbows against her body. Most people can do this and this without letting their elbows wing out on you. Same thing with the wrist, however. If you ask her, I want you to bend your wrist straight down as far as you can. If she could not perform this task without kind of pushing out a little bit, then you want to stabilize the forearms and push your wrist down and bring them back up and now point them up towards the ceiling and back down. I want to stabilize the extremity so that the only movement that I'm getting is in the joint that I'm testing. All right, we move on down to the hands. Yesterday when we were talking about this, I said with the fingers you want to measure flexion like this, correct? <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to combine this with the remainder of the finger flexion and make a fist. If I make a fist, I've basically bent my metacarpal phalangeal joint to 90 degrees which is what I need to accomplish in order to do this. When you make your fist, however, I want your thumb tucked inside. And there is a reason for this, and the reason for this will become evident in the winter when we're testing. Uh, right now, we're not testing the range of motion of the thumb. We're going to do that separately. So right now, I'm only testing the range of motion of the fingers. So I want your thumb inside so that I can get a good look at your fingers. That'll be my excuse for now. In the winter, it'll be because we're about to test for decorvain's tenosynovitis, and I need to do Finkelstein's test. But for now, it's because I want to see your fingers. So what I want you to do, once your hands are back in this position, is I want you to make a fist with your thumb tucked inside, and I want you to straighten your fingers back up. Okay? Fingers are together. Now what I'd like you to do, that was flexion and extension. Now what I'd like you to do is spread your fingers apart. That's abduction and this is adduction. Right now, again, I'm mainly testing the fingers. If you can get her, if you can get your patients to spread their fingers without moving their thumbs, feel free. But otherwise, they're going to do this. All right, once they've done that and they're back in this position, then we're going to move on to range of motion of the thumb. So what I'm going to do is have you place your hands in this position and put your thumbs up like this. I'd like you to bend your thumb down like this, okay? Bend your thumb down like that. That's flexion of the thumb. All of the movement is in these two bones. There's no movement at all in the first metacarpal. Okay? You can stabilize this if you have to, but you can see all the movement is right there. That's flexion. Then I want you to straighten your thumb out. That's extension. I want you to bring your thumb down to your index finger. That's adduction of the thumb. Adduction. Now I want you to straighten your thumb or pull your thumb back away from your index finger. That's A, B, abduction. And I'd like you to take your thumb, reach across, and touch the tip of your little finger. That's opposition. Did I leave anything out? Again, I want to go through this very carefully because the first group had a lot of problems with the thumb movements. So when you're doing this, I want you to, when, when I'm doing abduction and adduction my thumb remains straight everybody see that thumb stays straight and I'm moving back here I'm moving at this joint basically correct mm -hmm. my thumb is staying straight there's really no movement occurring at the MCP joint this is abduction and adduction in the radial plane flexion has no movement occurring here all the movement occurs in the MCP and the PIP joint. So if I stabilize this, I'm going to flex my thumb and I'm going to extend my thumb. Does everybody see that? If you're not sure about this, now's the time to get your thoughts in order. So flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, opposition. Those are the five movements you're going to test on the thumb which are tested separately from the rest of the fingers. Any questions on any 